Good morning, ESCOM family. Welcome to our midweek encouragement series. As you know, this month, our focus is on missions. And this year, our theme is, is he worthy? And so most of you know me as the worship person at church. I've been involved in worship as my primary calling in ministry. But today I want to share with you my journey in discovering God's heart for his people. And I hope it will be an encouragement to you. So I'd like to take us back just a few years of when I was 16. Um, I was leading a youth conference, uh, leading worship uh, at a youth conference. And I, as you know, conferences always end up with an altar call, a rededication um, of one's life. And so as the worship leader, my task that night was to provide the appropriate song. And so as people were you know, coming up for prayer, I sang, people need the Lord. Unbeknownst to myself though, the Holy Spirit was stirring up inside me something that I didn't realize. Um, because when I came to the end of the song, all of a sudden tears just started to flow down my face and I couldn't stop crying. Um, to the point where I was unable to sing. And the words that stuck with me were these words. It says, when will we realize that we must give our lives for people need the Lord? It wasn't until a few years later that I realized God was calling me into full-time ministry um, at 16 years old. Because after a conference, like most people, you know, the, the dramatic event fades into the background and you know you become just come back to your normal life and for me that was you know going into university so I applied to U of T chemical engineering and after my first year I had the opportunity to go on my second short-term mission trip and it was there that really God reinforced his calling in my life I spent a summer traveling in Europe with a Christian singing group and we would go from one country to another a village from one village to another village spreading the gospel through song this was early early 90s when the Berlin Wall had just fallen which meant the gospel was slowly being allowed back into some of the countries so the first impactful event for me was seeing as our bus you know slowly drives into a village and you see hundreds of people walking along the countryside and to be told that these people were actually walking or have been walking for days because they were coming to hear us. They were coming to hear us sing and really hungry for the gospel. So that was the first really impactful event. The second experience was on the same trip. Uh, I met a Christian lady now, I don't even remember her name, but she was my host um, for my stay in Prague. Wherever city we end up uh, going to, we would always go home, like stay with a host family. So I was assigned to stay with this young single lady, just maybe a few years older than me at that time. Um, she was so excited to host me as, you know, because this was her first time. She had just recently moved to the city, had just gotten her first job. So as we were walking to her apartment, she was in her broken English. She was so excited. She was like, I hope you're hungry because I had bought a lot of food. And of course, if you know me, you know, I'm always hungry. And so I was so excited to see, you know, like what she had. So anyways, you can imagine my surprise when we arrived at her apartment. It was a tiny apartment. As we entered, I saw one table and one chair and a mattress on the floor and a, a little sink on the counter with a small burner and a small fridge and so she was so excited she opened the fridge to show me what she had bought and literally um, it was one apple one yogurt and a bag full of mixed nuts and to her this was a lot of food I was so shocked. I remember just not being able to eat it. And so finally I just said, you know, I'm actually not hungry. Let's just save this for breakfast. 
Even though this woman had so little, she was so full of joy, so generous, so gracious. Is he worthy? Yes, he is. God used this young lady who just moved to the city, who was just starting her first job, and she was already extending herself because she loves Jesus. She opened her home to a stranger, me, and shared her food because she loves Jesus. That day, I realized I want that same joy, that same passion, that same generosity. How ironic that a young lady from North America goes to Europe to spread the gospel and she ends up coming home completely blessed and changed. Our God is like that. He shows up in the most unexpected places, but he shows up always. I mean, my mind was blown. I knew I could not go back to just the normal life. So God used one short-term mission trip to change the trajectory of my life. So you may ask, why am I not a missionary? Well, I believe a full-time missionary is a very specific call, and I did not receive that calling. But what I received is the same calling that you have been given. Acts 1.8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and all Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We are to be God's witnesses wherever we are. A Webster Dictionary gives us a definition of the word witness. Witness is one who has personal knowledge of something and gives evidence to this knowledge. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We are all called to be God's witnesses. And the beauty of this is that when God calls, he equips. It says here, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. I'm not sure we realize the gravity of this promise. We have been gifted the Holy Spirit. Imagine what God can do in and through us if only we obey. We need not rely on our own strengths, our smarts, our abilities, our resources, our finances. No, just as Jesus instructed his disciples to stay in Jerusalem until they receive that gift that God has promised. Jesus didn't say, okay, I'm going to heaven now. Bye, good luck. No. Secondly, we are called to be witnesses where we are planted. As Jesus instructed his disciples, don't depart Jerusalem until you get the gift that has been promised. And then what did he say? He says, be my witnesses in Jerusalem. They were in Jerusalem. Start with Jerusalem. That was where the disciples were in Jerusalem. Again, Jesus didn't say to them, go to the ends of the earth. He didn't say that first. He instructed them to start with Jerusalem, then Judea, then Samaria, then to the ends of the earth. So you and I are God's witnesses here, today, and now. Yesterday, I lost a dear sister in Christ someone who I walked closely with in this faith journey. And I can truly say that the blessing is ours to lose if we just keep this good news to ourselves and never share it with anyone else. As Pastor Sam encouraged us in his sermon, start where you are, with your neighbors, your church family, your coworkers, classmates, Show them the gospel in a tangible way so that our lives will bear witness to the good news of Jesus Christ.